Greetings and salutations. Thanks for clicking on the video. I sure do appreciate it. Today we're going to talk about backing up your entire system and moving your Linux installation. This would be if you were going to change out your hard drive, maybe do an upgrade. It would also be if you were moving your entire installation from a virtual machine to a physical machine or just from one machine to the next. And we'll talk more about how that works as we roll on. This is a bit of a difficult video to do. I've had a lot of people that have asked me to do it. And the truth of the matter is, is that giving you step-by-step -step instructions in the screencast format would be quite difficult simply because of the fact that it's hard to make a screencast of a machine that you're running off of a different operating system. But I think probably the best thing to do here would be to introduce you to the tools and concepts and then let you go do the research yourself simply because of the fact that even if I did give you a step-by-step -step tutorial and say okay you do this this and this there are so many variables and differences between installations and systems that the truth of the matter is that probably about half of the folks if they followed my steps exactly it wouldn't work for them and for me that would generate a lot of people asking questions like why doesn't this work and I couldn't answer them simply because I didn't know the details of their system. So this video might be considered for slightly more advanced users and even if this is something that you don't want to do it's kind of nice to know that the option is out there to actually make this happen. So let's talk about the inspiration for this video. I got a comment from Amandeep and what a nice name that is and I hope I pronounced it correctly. Uh, he says, hello, thanks for the video. I've installed Ubuntu using instructions in this video, but now I want one more hard drive in same HDD to save backup of my installation. Like in Windows, we can make three partitions, one for the OS installation, the second for storing personal files, and a third one we use to make system images or backups of OS on same hard drive. How can you do this in Linux, basically, blah, blah, blah. Well... I answered him by telling him that I didn't think it was a good idea to do that, and I, and I don't anyway. The reason why Windows does this is because of the fact that they do not ship installation media with Windows anymore. When they started with Windows 7, if you go out and you buy a Windows machine, chances are you will not get a DVD or a CD or anything that will help you to re-install um, that operating system if something should happen. So their way around this was was to put this rest uh, recovery partition on the hard drive in another partition and then you would have to create a disk, a recovery disk, a boot disk for Windows and use that to use the recovery partition to reinstall to the main partition. If you use the same physical hard drive to back up anything and that hard drive quits working, it crashes, you've lost not only your primary data, you've lost your backup at the same time. So this is not a good idea. And like I said, that's the reason why Windows does what they do. And in Linux, you couldn't actually use that recovery partition to do anything useful. You have to install Linux from media you can't do it from the hard drive itself there's no way to do that so what's the point in in making your layout more complicated to begin with when it's not going to do that same sort of deal so once again I'm in deep I appreciate your comment and please don't take this the wrong way but this is another example of a Windows user who comes to Linux and then overthinks the system okay don't do that it's much simpler and we're going to talk about uh, the simple ways that you can do the backup. The truth of the matter is basically that um, when we talk about doing backups in Linux, what's really important to backup are, is your personal files. The configuration of the software on your computer is really not that big a deal. As a matter of fact, if you did do a complete total system backup like I'm going to show you, Chances are it would take longer to do that than it would to just reinstall Linux and move your personal data from your home folder back up into the system. So I don't even bother with this. I don't keep disk images around, nothing. I will just rebuild the system. It's no big deal. But we'll talk about doing it anyway. 
So let's talk about the tools that we're going to use. The first tool we need to talk about is an excellent open source program called CloneZilla, which allows you to make clones of hard drives or partitions on hard drives. And it will make it possible for you to take an entire computer even if you have your hard drive set up in a situation where you have a separate root folder and then you have a separate home folder you can tell it to clone that entire drive and it'll take all of that data and put it into a file and then you can put another hard drive in the machine or go to another computer and then you could dump all that data back into that system onto the main hard drive in it and it will boot up so what I suggest you do is that you go and you look at the CloneZilla site here. It's CloneZilla.org, and you read up on it. There's a lot of really good documentation, and the main thing to make this work is to use a lot of planning. You have to know what you're trying to accomplish. If you know what you're doing, then you'll be able to find a procedure to do it. This is, yet again, another reason why... Uh, I can't give you a step-by-step -step because my example might not be what you actually need to do to get things done. So go to the CloneZilla site and you can read up on that. So let's jump over to the desktop here and we're going to take a look at CloneZilla in, in the flesh. We're not actually going to use it, but we're going to boot it up and we're gonna, I'm going to show you a couple of things and so therefore you know how it works. So the basic thing that you're talking about doing here is you want to boot the computer that you want to make a backup from off of the CloneZilla image. So when you go and get CloneZilla, you get an ISO file just like you would if you were going to install Linux. And you burn that to some sort of media, like a USB stick, or a, I use a CD simply because CloneZilla is really small. And then when you're ready to work with it, you just drop it in and boot the computer up from that instead of the operating system that's on it. So we're going to go ahead and boot that. Now for those of you who are thinking about trying to move Linux from one computer to the next, it is very possible to do that. You could never ever do that with Windows. CloneZilla comes up and the first thing that you'll see here is that we get the opening screen. Uh, you can just wait this out or you can press enter. I guess I didn't notice the, the wait time was like 20 something seconds there. so and CloneZilla will boot up. CloneZilla, at least this version that I have, which is a year or two old, actually is based on Debian. So those of you who run the Debian distribution of Linux will probably recognize the startup here. And it does take a little time. The trick to moving one Linux, uh, your Linux installation from one physical machine to another like I said, we could make an image file and then we could restore it, which is what we're talking about here. Or you could just physically take the hard drive out of the machine and put it in the, the target machine, the one you're going to, and boot it up. The, the, to make that work, you have to make sure that you have no proprietary drivers installed on that system. So, for instance, if you had a laptop, choose English for your language. It looks a lot like an installation, but it's not. Anyway, um, so if you had uh, proprietary video drivers installed and you wanted to move that Linux installation from one machine to the next, you would go into your driver manager or however you do it, and you would uninstall those drivers, go back to the open source versions of the drivers. Then you would make your backup or take the hard drive out and then move it to the next machine boot it up and reinstall the drivers for that machine. That's very important to do. If you do have proprietary drivers in there, then you're going to probably get uh, in a situation where it won't boot up. So anyway, it's come up now and we're going to start CloneZilla. And the first thing that CloneZilla is going to ask us is whether we want to uh, go device to device, which means that we're going to actually copy from one physical hard drive to another physical hard drive. This would be a situation where, okay, you have a computer that has one hard drive in it. You want to upgrade that hard drive. You're going to take the data off of the old hard drive and you're going to copy it to the new hard drive. You would want to choose device to device. 
if you wanted to create an image file on an external storage device like a USB drive, then you would choose the first option. So we're going to go ahead and choose that. We're going to go about as far as we can with this. There's no USB device hooked up to this, so we can talk about some of the, the options here. Most people will use a local device, which means that you're going to plug a USB drive into the computer. But there are others here you can use as an SSH server. Uh, you can use Samba. In other words, you could do this over a network. You could turn this loose. And if you had another machine that was on a Samba network, you could give it a destination, um, a Samba file, and it would actually put the backup on another machine on the network. Of course, if you had a slow network like a wireless network like I do which is really kinda of slow this would probably not be a great option because it would take quite some time to move all of the data from one computer to the next and if you had NFS installed which is the Linux only file sharing system you could use that uh, and of course dropping down to a command line so basically this is about as far as we could get I think because ne the next thing it's gonna do is it's gonna look for devices hooked up to the machine and in the case of this virtual machine, there's only one, and that's the hard drive. So, yeah, this is where you would plug in your USB device, and then CloneZilla would find it, and it would present you with a list so that you could uh, tell it where that goes. So this is about as far as we can get here in this particular deal, as far as showing you how CloneZilla works, uh, simply because of the fact that Passing a USB device through my virtual machines here is difficult, so you get the general gist. And if you follow the default settings and if you've read the documentation, it will work for you. You will actually be able to create that image. So once you get CloneZilla actually to have created the image, you should have uh, a pretty large, uh, it should be a, a directory on your backup drive that is pretty large it will you have to keep you have to figure out how much data you have on the machine okay so for instance let's use a tool here to see if we can figure that out for this installation if we were going to try and clone it and uh, the tool that you can use in um, Linux Mint and Ubuntu is disk usage analyzer and it's going to go through and it's going to look at all the drives on this system and then you can uh, see exactly it'll give you numbers you'll know what it is because you're going to have to have enough storage space to store all of the information on the system you're going to have to have that so get familiar with this program and we're assuming that you have one device in the system that has partitions on it okay now as you might recall from my installation videos if you watch those I encourage you to create the root partition first then the swap partition then the home partition the reason why that is is because you can resize that home partition because if you're going from one drive to the next probably what's going to happen is, is that you're going to go from a smaller to a larger drive and you're going to want to take advantage of that space and you're going to have to resize that partition if you use the standard partitioning scheme that Linux uses what's going to happen is you're going to run into an issue where um, you can't move it because the swap partition is at the end of the drive so if you installed your system and then you chose the option to erase the drive and let Ubuntu automatically or Linux Mint automatically partition the drive what it did was is it created a partition at the very end of the drive for the swap file and then it made one big partition for the rest of the space from the beginning to the up to where the swap partition begins and that was your uh, slash partition or your root partition and then everything went into that so the problem with this is now you can't resize that because that swap partition is in the way so the only thing that you would be able to do is you'd have to go in and you'd have to remove the swap partition and it would be like okay so you'd have to turn the swap partition off you would have to remove it from the disk this is before you did the backup and then you would have to make your copy 
and then you would have to figure out how to manually restore that swap part. It gets messy. You, you can see what we're going with here. So that's why I always said create a separate home partition and make sure that that home partition is the last partition on your drive. All right. So by the way, this disk usage analyzer program, um, it will, if it, there's a part of the system that it can't read, it'll come up with that error and that's usually because of permissions. So you could run it with um, privileges and it's still going to give you a pretty good idea of how much uh, space you have on the drive. So let's go ahead and shut down this machine. Obviously, if you wanted to do this, I'm going to remove the Clonezilla disk from the computer here. You would want to go through your Linux installation and you would want to remove all of the files that you don't need. In other words, you want to run BleachBit, which is a program we've talked about in past videos that allows you to do things like dump browser caches. and You want to reclaim as much hard drive space out of that system as possible simply because of the fact that you don't want to back up this data, this unnecessary data, because all of those caches and things can work out to be a, a couple of gigabytes or even more. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to assume that we have moved our installation to the new machine. And I'm going to show you a tool that will allow you to resize the partition. And it's called Gparted, and they have their own website. And you can go to their website and check it out if you like. But the truth of the matter is, is that if you have Ubuntu, or actually most distributions of Linux do this, and you have a live disk, you already have Gparted. You're ready to go. You don't need to download it. It is included with the live image. So what we're going to do here is we're going to boot our Ubuntu machine. And hopefully this works. Yep. And we're going to boot it off the Linux Mint Live DVD so we can take a look at how Gparted works. Now, I don't think that when I installed this Ubuntu that I partitioned it correctly. Usually in virtual machines where I am just testing the system, I just take the first option to erase the disk. So uh, I won't actually be able to resize this or do anything with it, but I can at least show you how it works. And it will take a little while for Linux Mint to load. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if you've been with me this far, this is something that's good to know how to do. I've maybe done it three or four times. I have moved, I've set up virtual machines and then cloned them and then taken that uh, image and put it on an actual machine. And believe it or not, it worked. And I've also used this to replace hard drives if you have a computer where your hard drive starts to fail and you want to just swap that drive out, you can do it this way. And if your computer is one of those like netbook type laptops that only takes one hard drive, then you really have to create an image file to do this because you can't plug the other hard drive back into the machine or have two hard drives in at the same time is what I'm trying to say. And you can't go, go from device to device. If you have one of those really nifty little uh, USB to SATA adapters, which are cool, you can take the hard drive that you're going to do, the target drive, the new drive, and then you could use Clonezilla to move that installation directly to that. And then you could just swap that out, put it in the same place. So as you, as you can see, doing this sort of thing takes a little bit of savvy. You've got to know how the, the computer works with hard drives. And the other thing that you have to know is how Linux works with partitions and where to mount them and how that system works because on some occasions if the um, universal device ID, the UUID, gets screwed up in the process the system won't boot. So that's something you need to think about here. We're getting ready to get Linux Mint so I can show you Gparted. There's a lot of great documentation online about this stuff. So you can look up Gparted and you can look up Clonezilla and you can read all the documentation about the tools and it'll tell you a great deal about it. 
I found that pretty much with Clonezilla, just doing the default stuff is uh, enough. And by the way, I'm actually booting this Linux Mint off of a, a real live DVD. I know DVDs are slower than USB drives, but I find that they're actually a bit more reliable over time. And nine times out of ten, when I'm working with somebody to try and get them to, you know, get them installed, I'll tell them to go for making a DVD if they have one in the system instead of doing the USB. There's fewer variables there, and sometimes USB install media doesn't work or gets messed up in the process. It's also a lot easier to explain to people how to make uh, a DVD of the ISO image that they download for like Ubuntu or something like that because if you're running Windows 7 or later, if you're running Mac or if you're running any version of Linux, all you have to do is click on that ISO file and it, uh, put a blank DVD in the thing and then click on the ISO file and the operating system will offer to burn that for you. It'll offer to burn that image. So that makes it pretty simple. You don't even have to go get extra um, software or anything. And as usual, the first thing that we're going to do with Linux Mint is increase the font size, make it a little bit easier for everybody to see, including me, so I'm not got my nose two inches away from the screen. Let's see here, just scale this up. Yeah, that's good right there, so we can take a look at Gparted. And close the settings. Now to get to Gparted, it's in the menu. Usually when you install your Linux distribution from your live environment, like the one we're working in here, then the um, Gparted program doesn't come over to the installed installation. And the reason why is because it doesn't do you any good. You have to run Gparted from a live DVD. It has to be done from some sort of boot disk or boot stick or whatever. Uh, so here's Gparted, and yes, that's exactly as I had thought. I did not uh, format this drive in a way that I could expand it. As you can see, I've put the swap file at the end, and now we have the single uh, partition, the actual data partition, up front. So this is how, if you just choose erase and install from the installer, this is how it does it. So what we would uh, have done if we would have installed this as per my um, instructions on past videos, we would have on this drive, we would have the root partition, the swap file, and then we'd have the home partition after that. And then what you could do is simply click on this partition. We're going to pretend here, do a little pretending. And uh, I was trying to see here. Okay, we've highlighted that. Let's see if it'll allow us to resize. Go to Device, Partition. And for whatever reason, it is ghosted out and it's not going to let me do it. I think probably because it is the root partition. Not going to allow me to do that. Let's see if it'll allow me to work with the swap partition. Nope, it knows it's swap, so it'll allow me to turn the swap off. So yes, this is only going to do this with like a home partition. If it, uh, it's not going to let me resize this. Mainly because if you resize the root partition, it might change the UUID and then the system will not boot. It could be the reason why they did this. So, yeah, so it would only be the home partition that you would be able to resize easily anyway. I'm sure there's a way to actually resize it if you wanted to, but you probably have to go in and change permissions or do something crazy, and it probably gets pretty deep. So, yet again, another reason when you install your Linux systems to make sure that you have a separate home and a separate root partition, and make sure that the home partition is the last one on the drive. Unless for some reason you did add another partition and then you, you know, you could resize that one. Whatever the last partition on the drive is the one that you want to resize. So that is what uh, Gparted looks like, which is basically what I wanted to do there was show you that.
and you can play play with this by the way just just um uh, you know this goes back to what i always say about having a junk computer to play with because if you had an actual machine that you could just install linux on just to play with doing this it would make it easier to learn how to do so uh, the problem with doing stuff like this always is the fact that we don't do it all the time and so we're always kind of learning it every time we come across it i don't think there's many people that make ghost images of their computers and move them to other machines or uh, have to do that in any way of course um, one thing that you could do is is that it's an idea is that it, let's say that you had a, a, a service that you were providing to people where you would load their machine with Linux you could create an image a generic image of Linux the way you want it set up for them and then you could just plug it in and dump it onto their computer and if it boot, then boot it up and uh, install the drivers and hand it to them. So it's another way of distributing the operating system if you wanted to do that. So there's all kinds of possibilities with these tools. And of course, I must tell you straight up right now that when you are doing this sort of thing, there is always the danger that you're going to lose your data. When you're moving big chunks of data around, there's a lot of possibility that you might have errors. And if for some reason you corrupt your image files or something like that, you lose it. So this is not something that you want to do casually. You want to take your time to figure this out. Probably want to do a traditional backup of your data too using GRSync. I'm going to put a link to my original video about backing up with GRSync in the description for this video. We'll also have links for Clonezilla and the Gparted site, so you can go through and check that out. So scroll down to the bottom of the uh, the description there, and you'll see that, and then you can go out and learn. So this is how you would do this. This is how you would proceed. Not a step-by-step -step tutorial tutorial but it is just me showing you the basics of how this works and you can take it from here and apply it to your own needs and learn more which is really the way you know it's supposed to be I think I've pretty much covered everything I wanted to cover in this video thank you very much for watching be sure and check out freedompenguin.com also check out easylinux.com if you would like personalized installation support if you want to get started with Linux and also check out the Easy Linux page on Facebook. Unlike most business related pages, the Easy Linux page on Facebook allows you to comment and um, actually hoping that at some point that that'll kind of catch on. We can get a community going over there and people can uh, comment on things. I post a lot of, um, of course, these videos and things that I find articles from other sources that I find interesting on Easy Linux, so be sure and check that out. And I would appreciate the appreciate the like an awful lot too. So thank you for watching, and we'll talk again soon.